uh, even when we have khilaf between each other, we need to take it civil and discuss these things amongst ourselves offline. You know, as you may know in the UK, I've been attacked by many, many different people who have sat there, tried to find faults and make fun and things. And I don't watch any of their stuff because I don't have time to waste. I've never made a video against them. I've never wasted my time, even brothers from different spectrums. You can go to brothers yani, who consider themselves super Salafi that made videos against me and people who consider themselves Deobandi or Brelwi that made videos against me. You've never seen me attack them in a video or call them out by name, even though there are brothers here in London that have offices here that brought me all kinds of their mistakes and their Arabic mistakes and videos of their teachers. And I said, Wallahi, I'm not going to post any of that because I want to see a united front of the Muslims, especially in front of non-Muslims. Mm -hmm. Look, uh, sometimes I need to be clear about what you believe and what I believe. And I'm very explicit on what I believe. I don't hide my aqidah. I don't hide my fiqh. I don't hide my manhaj. I'm clear on the Quran and the Sunnah and the way of the Salaf al-Ummah. I have no ambiguity about that. At the same time, if me and you disagree, I'd like to talk to you offline. You know why? Because as an ummah, when we put this stupidity out there of trying to attack each other and this drama, it hurts the ummah, it hurts our youth, it hurts the da'wah, it hurts those, those kuffar that were coming close to Islam. Can I ask you something? Yeah. yeah, even though it wasn't part of the chronology of when I was what going to ask. Ask away, brother. You say that, but when you had that engagement with Baba Daniel yes. Harikachu in uh, November, last November, at the AIM conference. Yes. To some outsiders, it may come across, or perhaps it did come across a bit of an inquisition. Okay. Good. Why? why Valid question. Let why, me explain this. Why did you feel the need to have that engagement on camera? First and foremost, uh, our brother Daniel, may Allah protect him and help us and uh, protect us. Amen. We had, and Sheikh Karim is a witness to this. He's here in the UK right now. You can ask him. We had talked to him offline. We had discussed everything. And we had even had a podcast between us three before that, clarifying some of his stances. Some of the statements that he had made, again, we had women that had sent Muslim, munaqqabad, muhajjibad, good Muslim women that had sent us tons of emails and letters about some of the statements that he made about women that they thought were against the Quran hadith. We wanted to clarify that issue. He had made some statements calling out particular rulers by name. Not, not ambiguous. I mean, we make rad of any haram anywhere in the world, but things that were clearly, and he calling out things that would be very specific to a particular king and country and so on, where it can cause great bloodshed and harm in the Muslim ummah. And he had made some statements ambiguously, for example, saying that he's a fanboy of Deoband and so on, that we wanted him to clarify, because as you know, and you live in the UK, within Deoband, there are different aqaid. And, and I have spoken to many Deobandi ulema about this issue. There is Mamati, there is Hayati, and there is other khilaf. I mean, if you look at Deoband.org and you look at the fatawa, sometimes they, they're not. And like, I mean, it's a madrasa, right? Like Medina University is a, is a university. Graduates from Medina, they come out. There's a big range of it, right? We wanted him to clarify what he meant by this offline. He requested that to be in front of the camera, not us. Ah, okay. And this is a big misunderstanding and the reason we haven't made videos clarifying because we don't really want to fan the flames on these issues okay that day i was speaking and brother wasim ismail was many wouldn't have known that people would not and i appreciate you bringing that up because if that, because some would have seen as an well why sheikh man sticking would, on him like that i would agree with you that that definitely came out we we all agree that it was not the way we should have done it things okay it is not the way we wanted to do things and it's not the way we planned to do things he wasn't supposed to speak there was no panel that time our brother Wasim Ismail was supposed to, or uh, I think he was speaking after me. Sheikh Karim is a witness and we can call him and you can ask him. Him and Sheikh Karim spoke and he asked for the panel to be public. And all we wanted to do was to clarify. When, if I was to say that I'm a fanboy of Medina, mm. graduates, it would be your haq to tell me, hey brother, do you mean Dr. Yasser Qadi? Do you mean Sheikh Fulan? Do you mean, right? You, you could ask me. And I, I have which no... Spec which spectrum of Medina University graduates, of I, course, you, right? Okay. Now, again, that's no disrespect to Jamia al Medina itself, but there are graduates from Medina that hold very strange views nowadays, you know, and again, I'm not trying to call out uh, the Dr. Yasser Qadi by name, no, no, but, but he, is, he is a graduate of Medina, right? 
and and they're, they're Dr. Tahir Wyatt and others who I would agree have different views. And there are other graduates, obviously in the UK, that would have very different views. So when he said, I'm a fan, why well, we just wanted him to clarify, right? And obviously you can see from the interaction that he didn't know what the Hayati, Mamati and what all that was about. Mm -hmm. And again, it, this was not meant to be done publicly, first off. It was at his request. Because one of his secondly, because one, one of his responses, sorry, because one of his responses was that similarly there's a spectrum of Salafis. Of course. And again, which you've just mentioned. Of yourself. course. And we are very clear. For example, the Khawarij of uh, I mean, Daesh and others who kill people, they also claim Salafi. They do. And we are very clear in condemning that. Right? When Dr. Yasir Qadi, and again, uh, I didn't really want to bring him up personally, but when he stated his issue about Istakhata and so on, Sheikh Karim Zaid was very clear in refuting that. And he wrote books on it. Mm. Personally, I'd rather talk to him offline. But, and, and I have, and we do, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, you know, when he mentioned the issue of birthdays, for example, when Noman Ali Khan recently mentioned about music, we're very clear in coming out and addressing those and condemning those and clarifying those. That's all we ask for. That if you're going to say that, clarify. You know, what are you saying? Because even on the issue of Wahdat al-Wujud, amongst the ulema of Dilban, you will find a range of opinions, right? So when you say, you're a fanboy of Dilban. Which aspect are you taking? Because the average person that respects you and doesn't know, and again, it's not an issue of Dilban, it's an issue of the, of the issue itself, right? And I have many scholars that I speak to, that I respect, that I discuss with, with evidences that are from Dilban, and we come to agreement on many issues, and we hope to present that to the Ummah soon, inshallah. Any to show a unity amongst the Muslims based on the Quran and the Sunnah without any compromise, inshallah. Right? But there are others who hold very different views. I, here in the UK, and again, I'm not going to mention names or places. I was in a city where there were two masajid that both followed Dioban right next to each other. And I was, you know, in the area and I was speaking to people from that congregation and they were warning me about each other. <laughs> Right? And again, uh, this happens with, with brothers who call themselves Salafi as well. Yeah, that and we'll see from as well. Go, happens in Brelvis as well. Yeah. In Pakistan, I studied in Pakistan, I lived in Pakistan. There will be a Mamati and Hayati Dubandi Masjid right next to each other with speakers pointing at each other, calling each other out all day long. So, if you, my, my brother Delhi, if you said, I'm a Umm al Qura uh, fanboy or a Medina fanboy, and we have graduates from there in the country that are preaching something very different from others, for me to ask you to clarify that is not something unreasonable. But the choice to do it on camera, you are saying was done. Once again, and, and again, I'll, I'll give you Sheikh Karim's number. You can speak to him himself. This is a, a clear thing that he is the one that requested it that way. We would not have wanted it that way. We did not want it that way. And it was not an inquisition. We spoke to him offline. It was meant to be a clarification. But unfortunately, it did not clarify and caused more fitan. And we, we ask Allah to forgive us for any mistakes that we made. And we ask Allah to unite the ummah and come back to it. And again, since then, one of the positives, I have been engaging with many ulema who have graduated from Deoband. And I've presented them many evidences of things that, for example, we would disagree on. And we've come to an agreement on a lot of them, looking at the clear evidences. And we hope that when we present that to the ummah, it will be a point of unity. Shall not.